This is part three of the videos on factorial design. And I wanted to remind you quickly of what I did in the last video. I started with the very simplest design, a one factor design that takes on uh, two levels, minus one and plus one. I showed you how you repeat that design to uh, get replicates. In this particular case, uh, we had four replicates, I believe. And uh, then I showed you how to randomize before you actually collected your data. And then finally, how to use regression in order to estimate the, uh, the analysis of variance. We then went on to the next most complicated example. And I showed you how you get the uh, design for the 2 to the 2 factorial design by repeating the design for the 1 factor uh, twice. So you repeat it uh, uh, right here and then again. And then for the first time you repeat it, you set the second factor at the low level twice. And then, uh, then you set the second factor at the high level twice. And this matrix then determines what your settings are of the levels for the two factors. Uh, then I showed you how you repeat this design in order to get replicates. Uh, we then randomized the design. Uh, we uh, got Y data, and then we estimated the uh, design by using regression. Uh, the only new thing here is that we now have this idea of an interaction term, and the interaction term is gotten by the product of F1 and F2. So you'll notice that there's F1 times F2 is the last column over here. Um, that product is not used in any way to set the uh, levels of the factors for collecting the data, but it's necessary in order to, enter, to estimate the interaction. And again, we estimated this by just using regular regression. So now that you know how to go from a design to replicates and then randomized and estimate with regression, uh, what I'm going to show you in this video is how to create these experimental designs. So I'm going to repeat what I started with last time just very quickly. Uh, the first one is going to be a 2 to the 1 factorial design. And it, of course, has only one factor. And that factor is going to take on the levels minus 1 and 1. OK, the next design that we have is going to be a 2 to the 2 factorial design. So this is on two factors at two levels. And it has two factors, F1 and F2. And I create this design from the last one by selecting the last design and then repeating it. And I run this entire first design with the new factor that I'm adding set to the low levels. So then I repeat the design again. And I run uh, this design with the new factor set at the high levels. So uh, here I have the 2 to the 2 factorial design. So it is this design that's going to dictate what the settings are um, for the two factors when I actually run the experiment. So moving on, we need next a 2 to the 3 factorial design. And it is going to have three factors. And once again, I get this design by selecting the 2 to the 2 factorial design, the previous design, and pasting it in. And then running this uh, 2 to the 2 factorial design with the third factor set entirely at the low level. And then I need to repeat the previous design again. And I run it now with the new factor set at the high level. And then for the 2 to the 4 factorial design, I repeat this process. 
I'm going to copy the previous design I'll add my fourth factor I'm going to run this new design entirely with this four factor set to the low level I'm then going to copy the previous design again and paste it below and then run the design again with the new factor set at the high level and I'm going to repeat this process one more time this is going to be a 2 to the 5 factorial design and to get this design I just take my previous design and copy it down and then I add my fifth factor and I run the design entirely at the low level and then I copy the previous design again and paste it in and then I run it the second time here with the new factor uh, entirely at the high level okay now I'm gonna go ahead and stop here but the process is clear you could go on creating two to the six factorial designs and and so on and furthermore now from the previous uh, video you know how to create replicates uh, now I'm not sure I've said this before but in what we're doing it's very important that we have balanced designs and in balanced designs we have the same number of re replicates for each unique combination of the factors the factor levels so uh, if I needed replicates of this 2 to the 5th factorial design, if I needed three replicates, I would have to take this design and copy it three times and then randomize it and then collect data at the settings, uh, just like I showed you how to do in the, in the, previous, the previous video. So uh, what I have shown you how is to, to do is to create these designs. It's a very simple process. Uh, it's not very difficult to create designs with really quite a large number of factors. The numbers, the plus and minus ones that I have in this file at this point are the ones that determine whether the settings are high and low for the factors. What I've left out at this point are the uh, additional columns that we were going to need in a regression in order to estimate all of the interactions. So I'm now going to go back and put these in. So firstly, let me box the design that we have. So I'm starting with the 2 to the uh, 2 factorial design. So two levels and two factors. And now I'm going to add the interaction. There's only one interaction in this particular case. It's uh, F1 by F2. And it is just the product of the first factor times the second factor. So we can see that the pattern here, let's just see if I can get this to copy, there it goes. Um, the pattern here for the interaction term between F1 and F2 is a uh, plus 1, 2 minus 1s, and then a plus 1. And uh, again, the numbers in this interaction column are not ones that are determining the settings when we actually do the experiment. Now for the 2 to the 3 factorial design, let me box the uh, the numbers that do determine what the settings are but now I'm going to have three two-way interactions so F1 times F2 then F1 times F3 and finally F2 times F3 
And then I will have one three-way interaction, which is F1 times F2 times F3. Let me go ahead and put these in. This is F1 times F2. Copy it. Uh, I'll go ahead and do all these interactions and then just copy them down. So this one is going to be F1 times F3. This one is going to be F2 times F3. And then finally, this is going to be F1 times F2 times F3. And now I can just copy this entire row down. To get the columns necessary to estimate the two-way interactions and then the three-way interactions. Now you can always figure out how many interactions you're going to have by using that uh, P choose X formula that I gave you in the slide. So you can go back and review that. But Excel has a corresponding function called combine, B-I-N. And if I want to know the number of two-way interactions that I'm going to have when I have four things, it's going to be um, the total number of, fac of factors. I'm sorry, we have three factors in this case. So it's the total number of two-way interactions when I have three factors. So it's going to be combine three, and I choose out of that two, and you'll see that this will show me that there are three two-way interactions. So I can use this function combine in order to check whether or not I actually have all of the interaction terms. So the last one that I'm going to do here um, with uh, you watching uh, is going to be for the 2 to the 4 factorial design. So firstly let me box out the settings that I'm going to use when I run my experiment. And now I need to put in the interactions. I'm going to have an F1 times F2 F1 times F3, F1 times F4, and then F2 times F3, F2 times F4, and finally F3 times F4. So let me just check that there are six two-way interactions in a um, experiment with four factors. So combine, I now have four factors, I'm choosing two at a time, and it tells me there are six two-way interactions. Now I'm going to have three-way interactions as well. I'm going to have four of these, and they are F1 F2 times F3. F1 times F2 times F4, F1 times F3 times F4, and finally F2 times F3 times F4. And then lastly I'll have one four-way interaction, F1 times F2 times F3 times F4. And then I'm just going to fill in the columns using the formulas. So this is going to be F1 times F2. This is going to be F1 times F3. This will be F1 times F4. Then F2 times F3. F2 times F4. And finally for the two-way interactions it will be F3 times F4. Now I need to get my four three-way interactions. 
F1 times F2 times F3. And it's going to be F1 times F2 times F4. Then it's going to be um, F1 times F3 times F4. And then finally, F2 times F3 times F4. And then last but not least, I can do the four-way interaction, which is going to be F1 times F2 times F3 times F4. Now if I just take this entire row that I've created and copy it down through the design, I will have all of the columns that I need to use in the regression to estimate the various interactions. I'm going to go ahead and do the very last one, which is the 2 to the 5 factorial. But since there are a lot of, of two-way and three-way interactions and so on, I'm going to pause the recording until this is complete. So I've now completed the 2 to the 5 factorial design. Once again, it's only the values for the first five factors that show what the settings are going to be for the experiment. All of the other columns that I've appended to the right-hand side of this design are needed in order to estimate the uh, two-way, three-way, and four-way, and five-way interaction using regression. So there are 10 two-way interactions, and so I've enumerated those, and I've checked the number by using the combined function. So it's the number of ways of picking two things out of five, and there are 10. There are then going to be 10 three-way interactions, and I've listed those out. There are five four-way interactions, and those are listed out. And then finally, there is one five-way interaction. I've put in the formulas for the interactions, which are just the product of the corresponding columns in the design, and copied that down. So in the 2 to the 5 factorial design, there are 32 unique settings of the levels of the five factors. OK, this then concludes the uh, videos on the factorial designs. I've now shown you how to uh, create these designs. If you wanted to run a 2 to the 5 factorial designs with some number of replicates, you know that you take this design matrix and you copy it the number of times needed for the number of replicates, and that you would then randomize the order of the settings uh, and then collect your data, and you could then estimate the uh, main effects and the interactions um, by regressing the data onto the uh, matrix which I have just created uh, in front of you.